Good morning, Fellowship Sunday School class. I'm glad to be with you today. I'm hoping you, that you are all safe and well and doing good and staying safe, staying away from that coronavirus situation. Our lesson today comes from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 11 through 27. The title of our lesson today is called The Choice. Let's open in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, for every blessing you give us. Thank you, Father, for just bringing us together this time by video that we can bring to our class the lesson of, of the book of Proverbs. We just pray, Father, that you'll open my mind and my heart to do that that you'd have me to do, that I might be able to bring forth the message and the lesson in a way that would be pleasing to you and be understandable to our class. We ask, Father, for your guidance and direction. We pray, Father, you be with our class. Strengthen each and every member, Father. Give them your presence. Uplift them and encourage them, Father. I know, Father, this is a testing time for all of us, and that it's just harder to do things this way than we'd be normal if we were facing, sitting face to face, Father. We pray for Trinity Baptist Church. Pray, Father, you'll continue to bless it, that it might be able to come back to a normal position someday, and that all this virus stuff will be gone away, and we'll be able to take things back in the way they used to be, Father. We love you, Father, for every blessing you give us. Thank you, Father, for giving us strength to do this today, Father. Be with us, and let your Holy Spirit lead me in all that I say and do. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scriptures today, as I mentioned, come from Proverbs chapter 4, verses 11 through 27. It says, I have taught thee in the way of, the wisdom, way of wisdom. I have led thee in the right paths. When thou goest, thy steps shall not be straighted, which means be tendered. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of this instruction. Let her not go. Keep her, for she is thy life. This word instruction means wisdom. Enter not into the paths of the wicked, and go not in the ways of the evil men. Avoid it. Pass, it, pass not by it. Turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence but the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day the way of the wicked is as darkness they know not at what they stumble my son attend to the, my words incline thine ear to my sayings let them not depart from thine eyes keep them in the midst of thine heart for they are life unto those that find them, and health to all their feet of their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth, and perverse lips put far from thee. Let thine eyes look straight on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the paths of, the, of thy feet. And let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right hand, nor to the left. Remove thy feet from evil. May the God have a blessing upon his word today. As I mentioned, our lesson today is entitled, The Choice. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 11 through 27. To get us started, let's look at a paragraph from a very interesting book I found in several paragraph in an interesting book I found with several references for the book of Proverbs. The paragraph starts out direction, not intentions, hopes, dreams, prayers, beliefs, intellect, or in education determines destination. I know it's depending on attempting to believe that our good intention, aspirations, and dreams somehow have the ability to do and an end run around the decisions, the decisions that we make on a daily basis. But at the end of the day, the principle of the path determines the outcome. Simply put, you and I will win or lose in life by the paths that we choose. This is coming from the book from called The Principle of the Path by Andy Stanley. And uh, it's, it's a very interesting book. I've read it all the way through. It has a lot of scripture from the book of Proverbs where he bases a lot of his statements from. These verses present a, to today present a, a, a renewed appeal that the father to son to walk in the paths 
of wisdom and to avoid the path of the, of the wicked at all costs. You know, as we go through life, we need to watch where our feet go and where they lead us. Avoid the wickedness at all costs. That's what he's telling us. The utmost of the two paths is profound. The way of wisdom is straight, uncumbered, uncumbered, and safe. The way of the wicked is torturous, hazardous, and marked by violence. One road is a path of light, the other is a path of darkness. One leads to promise, the other runs to stumbling the destruction. Let me ask you this question. Was there ever a time when you had to make a choice that you felt that the answer was the most obvious thing that you could pick up would be help you make the choice? Do you remember what make, made the choice appear obvious to you? How did the outcome compare to what you anticipated? Did it turn out the way the obvious way you thought it would be? Or would, do you wish you to stop and thought about it and ask the Lord to give you guidance in it? We are faced with choices every day and throughout our lives. Some are insignificant. Some seem to have one clear answer. Some have a variety of good answers. However, there is one choice of ultimate significance where, where there is only one good option. Will you follow God or reject Him? That's our decision to make. Are we going to follow God's guidance? You know, we're all born again believers, but we're still responsible to follow God and realize what he's, what he's telling us is true. And we need to try not to reject him or turn away from him. Let his guidance and his word teach us and what we need to say. The first part of our lesson today is take the, the path to take. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 11 through 13. Let's read those three verses. I have taught thee in the ways of wisdom, and I have led thee in the right paths. Then thou shalt... Then thou goest, excuse me, when thou goest, thy steps shall not be straightened, that is, hindered. And when thou runnest, thou shalt not stumble. Take fast hold of instruction, that is wisdom. Let her not go. Keep her on, keep, keep her, for she is the, is thy life. You know, we must understand that when we use God's wisdom to guide ourselves with, our lives will be much easier to live by, and the things we do will be more, become more understandable and how they work out. Solomon declared that his aim was to guide people on the paths of life. Solomon used the metaphor of traveling a path to describe our choices in life. And many times in our own lives, we, as we go through life, we got to realize where we're headed and what we're looking for and what the answer needs to be. And we got to realize, too, that the path, when you pick a path, it has a destination. And that destination never changes at the end of that path. And if we pick the wrong path, we're going to wind up in the wrong place. So we'll be careful when we pick our path. You know, I remember back when they were building the Alaska pipeline from the southern end of Alaska to the northern end of Alaska. And they put up, there was a sign there at the beginning that, as you got down go, to start up through there to go through there. That on the sign it says, Pick your rut carefully, for you will be in it for the next 400 miles. You know, that's important for us to realize in our own lives. Pick us, pick the paths that we go very carefully, for it may be the intention of our whole life, that, that path that we follow. Why, why, is there, why, why is this metaphor appropriate? Because it points out that life is more than just going to live day by day. And not taking it, not worrying about where things come from. There are various types of paths, straight and smooth, rough terrain, paths that double back, paths that lead that dead end, and paths with, with branches. And be careful when you get paths with branches, because some branches can lead you off in the wrong direction. In your mind, can you develop examples of some of the paths we might run into? It is important to follow wisdom and instruction. Remember, in Proverbs 1 7, as we read earlier in our early one of our earlier lessons, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and discipline. How did Solomon describe the path of godly instruction? How does following godly instruction lead our lead to our lives? We need to understand that what we do is all guided by what God tells us to do if we follow him. We must remember to follow him in every way. Remember that the path is straight, but it isn't described as short. Following God's leads to life, but these verses don't promise an immediate arrival at a destination. 
or that the path will be easy. There's still a journey to take, and we all have yet the journeys to finish out. The part, second part of our lesson is called The Path to Avoid. Proverbs chapter 4, verses 14 through 19. It says, Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the ways of the evil man. Avoid it, pass, not, pass by it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not, except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away, unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness, and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more into the perfect path. The ways of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at the points they may stum at what they stumble. Solomon warned against following the paths taken by evil people. What words of, uh, or phrases did Solomon use to convey the urgency and uh, seriousness of avoiding the path of wickedness? You know, we need to understand that Paul, uh, Solomon used a lot of words to give us instructions and guidance on how to live. When you read the book of Proverbs, it's to get to give us greater understanding as how we should live our lives and how to, to get, turn to God and to be, trust in Him. There are several answers to our question here. Second Timothy chapter two, verses twenty-two through twenty-six says, "Flee useful lust, but follow righteous faith, charity, peace, with them that call on the Lord." out of the pure heart, but foolish and unlearned questions avoid, knowing that they do gender strife. For the servant of the Lord must not strive, but he, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach patience, in meekness instructing those that oppose themselves, if God preadventure will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth, and that they may recover themselves out of the name snare of the devil, who who are taken captive by him at his will. There are many similarities between these verses that we just read and between the, between the, these verses of Proverbs that we're studying today, in verse four, chapter four, chapter four, verses fourteen through nineteen. Why do wicked choose choices lead to a more wicked living mainly because when you choose wicked choices that is in the case it's just the way you're trying to live is a wicked life what are some examples of this verses 16 and 17 characterize the wicked as living for evil and violence consider the roles of dis dissatisfaction and discontentment pl that play in the life of the of the wicked one poor choice can lead to another downward social and of a, of a dependence on a substance or action. Contrast with verse 18, where goodness leads to more goodness, shining brighter and brighter. Galatians 6, 7 says, Be not deceived. God does, is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. And you know, we need to under, realize that. God's word tells us that no matter what passes we say, what we try to do, whatever we sow in our life, Eventually, it will reap a crop for us. It may not be the crop we want to have, but we don't realize that what we're sowing is not worthy of what God's, God's honor. We will reap what we focus our own on and put our intentions toward. In these verses, compare the life of the wicked with the life of the Christ that's followed. And there's some verses I want us to look at. John chapter 8, verses 34 to 36. 34 to 36. Jesus answered them, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Whosoever committeth sin is the servant of sin. And the servant abideth not in the house forever, but the son abideth, forever, abideth ever. If the son therefore shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. This is a comparison between slavery and freedom. In Romans 6, 23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Death versus life. That's what the, uh, Paul was trying to show us out of these verses in the book of Romans. Death versus life. We can make our uh, the wages of, of, for the wages of sin is death. And we need to realize when we sin against God, it, it, it takes us out of our fellowship with the Lord. Proverbs 4.19, which is one of our verses today. The way of the wicked is as darkness. They know not at 
what they stumble. And then comparing to John chapter 12, uh, 8, verse 12, they then spoke Jesus again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall be shall have the light for, of life. That's darkness versus light, as we look at those two verses. Isaiah in 57, chapter 57, verses 20 and 21. But the wicked are like the, the troubled sea, when it cannot rest, Rest, whose waters cast up are up a mire and a dirt and dirt. There is no peace, saith saith my God, to the wicked. And compared to Matthew chapter eleven, verses twenty eight to thirty, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn of it, for I am meek and lowly in heart, and ye shall shall find rest unto thy, your soul. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. These two verses represent a, re a, a comparison between recklessness and restlessness and the rest. And if we trust in Jesus Christ, we will have rest. Our second, third part of our lesson today is, is a very uh, is a, a, an important section also. In these two, this section is the, the section of man's constancy of heart and purpose, honesty and speech, steadiness. In, of gaze and right goal in walk and life. Setting off of the path of wisdom is no casual thing. We must realize that when we go, pick up a, a, something to follow, a following something with God's guidelines and all, we need to be understanding that he, he is in control. And when we take, take wisdom as our guide, that everything will be taken as it should be. It's not a casual thing, but it's an important thing. Much of this chapter reiterates and refines the things found in chapters one and two and through three of Proverbs, which we've studied earlier. The emphasis on virtue compares to prepares us for the uh, frightening warnings of chapter five of Proverbs, which will be taken up later. This third section is called the choice to make. We all have a choice to make, and we must understand that the choices that we make has an effect on how we live our lives and the things we do. Proverbs chapter four, verses 20 through 27. My son, attend to my words, incline thine ear unto my sayings. Let them not depart from thee, thine heart, eyes. Keep them in the midst of thine heart. For they are life unto those that find, that find them, and health to all their, t their flesh. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. Put away from thee a forward mouth and perverse lips, Put far from thee. Let thine eyes look right on, and let thine eyelids look straight before thee. Ponder the way, path of, of thy feet, and let all thy ways be established. Turn not to the right, nor to the left. Remove thy foot from evil. You know, Solomon charged, challenged God's people to continually consider his counsel, diligently watching over their hearts as they do that. He encouraged them to remain focused on the righteous paths that God has placed before us, refusing to veer off that path in, a, in any way. Solomon, pl Solomon placed the responsibility for righteous living on individuals, not their circumstances. And now we need to realize that our living, how we live, is part of our own responsibility as an individual. It's not brought about because of our circumstances. Why must we remain diligent even after our initial decision to follow Christ? You know, like any relationship growing, growing in fellowship with God takes effort and intensity, intensity, intentionality. In other words, we must be keeping our mind on God, studying His Word, respecting Him and honoring Him in everything that we do. While God is looking to make us more and more like Christ, the devil is prowling. First Peter Chapter 5, verses 6 and 9 says, Humble yourselves, therefore, under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. Cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about seeking whom he may devour, whom, whom resist steadfast in the faith, Knoweth that the same afflictions are accomplished in your 
brethren that are in the world. You know, we need to realize that the devil is always trying to trip us up. We need to understand that whatever we do, whether it might be right, that when we live our life, righteous life, the devil doesn't like that. He don't want to see us doing the right things in God's world, in this world today, under God's guidance. What strategies have you found helpful in saying diligent and and discern, disciplined? Keeps keep stay grounded in the Word of God is one of the important things we need to do. We need to stay grounded in God's Word. Continue to study His Word. And getting a greater understanding from it, keep spiritual disciplines and habits that promote growth in in the behavior, such as prayer, scripture reading, worship, and discipline. In our lesson today, we've said well, several areas, and we're going to look at the conclusion here now. It says, what are some sh signs that we're on the, on the on the right path? You know, Proverbs urges us to listen to godly wisdom, carefully consider our choices and follow the paths of righteousness. But also, God offers people and life to those who follow him. And that's one thing we may understand, that we need to really follow God, trust in him to lead us where we need to go. In the latter part of our lesson, Dave, when we follow God's path, our light will grow brighter and brighter. That's a promise given to us in God's word and through the book of Proverbs. Let's close in prayer. Father, we thank you for this day. Thank you, Father, that you've got us through this lesson today. We just pray, Father, what's been taught today has been beneficial to those who listen to it and to watch it. We thank you, Father, for every blessing you give us. We pray, Father, that the words that have been used would be a blessing to them and a blessing to me and a blessing to all that may hear it and look and read upon it and watch his videos. We ask, Father, for your guidance and direction. We ask strength and understanding to be placed upon us. And pray, Father, you just, any corrections or any impressions that you be made to my word, you'll place it to the corrected in the heart of the individual that the Holy Spirit might lead them in the right direction that we all might be led by your Holy Spirit in all that we do. Keep with us today. Help us, Father, to be the witness you call us to be. Help us, Father, to glorify your name in all that we say and do. And give us strength, Father, to honor you and to glorify you in all that we say and do. In Jesus' name, amen.